These are dark times, there is no denying. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbin Alameen, Dear respected brothers, sisters, listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After praising Allah the Almighty and sending salutations on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I begin by confessing my weakness because justice will not be done on this title. I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah accepts my efforts in delivering this message as I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah accepts your efforts in listening to this message December 14th 1503 a kafira she gave birth to an antichrist the hadith that could be found in Musnad of Imam Ahmad the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the Wallahi, by Allah, the day of judgment will not come until 30 antichrists will appear and the final one will be the one-eyed liar. The hadith recorded by Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim in the Sahih. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that each one of them will claim to be a prophet of Allah. My brothers, many false prophets have come and gone. Whether it was Musaylama, whether it was Tulayha, whether it was Sajja, whether it was Saf, whether it was Abu Mansur, whether it was Rashid Khalifa, whether it was Muhammad ibn Sa'id, whether it was Ghulam Ahmad, whether it was Dr. York, whether it was Jasmine, whether it was Mahmoud Al Faraj, whether it was Mukhtar, and the one France gave birth to was none other than Nostradamus, born on the 14th of December 1503. And if you remember, he made the media big time. Why? Because his prediction that the world is going to end. On a certain day he made the media big time he made the newspapers big time he made the radio stations big time he made the magazines big time everyone around the world who was interested in Nostradamus started to believe in his predictions and this very prediction that the world is going to end. Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they started to believe in this to such an extent that people start preparing for their death. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You will see the very Muslims of that time when on that night where there was lightning, there was thunder, and all of a sudden, the Muslims, the Muslims, they started to believe that the hour has come. 
you had the millennium. Yet again, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they started to believe that the hour is going to take place on the turn of the millennium to such an extent to those people who do not believe in Allah and his messenger. These people, they left their homes and they migrated to Palestine. Why? Because they wanted to witness as they believed that the turn of the millennium will bring with it Isa alayhi salam and the hour will take place. It rocked the imams of those weak Muslims and they started to believe in this. You have the new movie that's just come out this year, 2012. Yet again, Muslims and non-Muslims and especially the Muslims, they are on forums sending text messages. Why? They are warning other people that the hour will take place on 2012. In spite of the verses of the Quran, where Allah says, O oh Muhammad, they ask you regarding the hour. Tell them, its knowledge is only with the Almighty Allah. Yet again, Allah says, O oh Muhammad, they ask you regarding the hour. Tell them there is not the business of any prophet to tell them its timing. Why? Because no prophet knows when Qiyamah will take place. But in spite of these verses of the Quran, people have fallen in the trap and they are believing that people are Nostradamus knows when the hour will take place. But bear in mind, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the five things are only with the Almighty Allah and he will remain with the Almighty Allah. And out of the five is the hour. And bear in mind, no Nostradamus, no Dr. York, no Mukhtar, no Rashid Khalifa, no Musaylama, no Sajjah, no Saf, no Abu Mansur knows when the hour will take place. Why? Because this knowledge is only with the Almighty Allah. But one thing is for certain that the hour is near. Allah says, what do you know? Perhaps the hour is near. Yet again, Allah says, the day of reckoning draws close. Yet again, Allah says, Qiyamah has come close and the moon has split. But in spite of these constant reminders of the Quran, you and I, we live a life of disobedience. We live a life of sin. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the day of judgment will not take place until a mother, she will give birth to a master. The hadith is in Muslim. Isn't this the case today? What do you find? You find the son and the daughter when their mother has carried them in her stomach for nine months. And when this child is born, and he reaches a mature age. The Muslims, they have gone to such an extent that they will call their own mother a dog to such an extent that they will try to beat their own mother. How truthful is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hour will not take place until killing, killing, killing will be on the increase. The hadith is in Bukhari. Isn't this the case today? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the day of judgment will not come until children of fornication will be big in number, will be large in number. The hadith is in Tabrani. Isn't this the case today? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
that the day of judgment will not take place until trust becomes the means of making profit. Isn't this the case today? Just as a brother rented his house out to a certain person and he trusted this person. The guy told him, don't come to my house because my wife covers up. I will meet you in the local park. So the brother agreed. And when the brother agreed, time passes, months went by. The payment was on time. But one day, the payment didn't come through. So he tried his utmost best to get in contact with this guy. But what happened? There was no contact with him. So this brother went down his house, his own house that he was renting out. And when he went to his house, you know what did he see? He seen his house was transformed into a marijuana factory. How truthful is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The hadith is in Tirmizi. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the day of judgment will not come until earthquakes will be on the increase. The hadith is in Bukhari. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the day of judgment will not come until singing women, dancing women, musical instruments will be on the increase and will become popular. The hadith is in Tirmizi. Isn't this the case today? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the day of judgment, it will not come until people will follow the Quran and they will reject the hadith. The hadith is in Abu Dawood. Isn't this the case today? Because when you meet these brothers who only follow the Quran and they say, we don't believe in no hadith. There's no such thing as a hadith. And you tell them to offer the Salah. They will say, prove it to me from the Quran. Where does it say you read your Salah? How do you perform it? You know, Salah in the Quran is referring to horse racing. We don't believe in Salah. We're not going to pray Salah. This Salah where Allah is mentioning over 76 times. Over 76 times. These brothers are saying that we don't believe in the Quran regarding Salah. This means horse racing. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the day of judgment will not come until you will see people they will disobey their mothers in such a manner that they have never ever been disobeyed. But in spite of these constant reminders, in spite of these minor signs, you and I, we still live a life of disobedience, we live a life of sin. And when the people are told that repent before it's too late, they make a joking, they make a joke out of it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the hour will not take place until intoxication will be on the increase. Isn't this the case today? These constant reminders, constant reminders, yet we live a life of disobedience, we live a life of sin. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that after the minor signs, the major signs will take place. And after the major signs, the hour will come. I ask, did you know a day will come that a child will try to behead his own father? I ask, did you know a day will come that a mother of two, she will take her daughters, Muslims, she will take her daughters clubbing. 
And when she is asked, where is your husband? And she will reply by saying that he is on a taxi job. I ask, did you know a day will come that a child, the age of 11, he will return home one day and he will rape his own two little sisters. And he will say, I've learned this in school. I ask, did you know a day will come that they'll have a homosexual Imam and there'll be homosexuals praying behind them and they will think it's normal. I ask, did you know a day will come the father and daughter are watching a film time passes and they commit zina with each other i ask did you know a day will come that when a muslim is told to hold the quran in the city center he will say brother my mates are watching me don't tell me to hold the quran people are gonna laugh at me the girls are gonna laugh at me and when he's told Brother, put it in your bag. He will say, I, I could not take the risk. Why? Because people are watching me. So one of the brothers puts this Quran, the book of Allah, in the bag for him. And he hands it to him. And he says, Brother, don't give it to me. Give it to my mate. He will carry it for me. I asked, did you know these days will come? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that time will come that people will be committing sin and all of a sudden people's faces will be transformed into monkeys and pigs and the same winds that destroyed the people of Luke the same winds the same stones will come and destroy these people the same stones will destroy these people the same winds that destroyed the people of Ard the same winds will come and will destroy these people and the earth will be open and he will take them in and down they'll go right till the day of judgment. The day of judgment is close. But in spite of this, we brush it under the table. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that for 40 years, there'll be no Iman. Whether it's in Medina, whether it's in Sham, whether it's in Bosnia, whether it's in Chechnya, whether it's in Afghanistan, whether it's in Pakistan, there will be no Iman. And then all of a sudden, on a Friday, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the hour will come, it will come on a Friday. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the hour will come all of a sudden without you even realizing it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that before a transaction takes place, the hour will come. Before the person lifts a morsel to his mouth, before the morsel reaches his mouth, the hour will take place. And Allah, the Almighty will order Israfil alayhi salam to blow through the horn. This angel is such that his eyes are fixed on the throne of the Creator. This angel is such that one ring of his horn is bigger than the east and west put together. This angel is such that he does not blink. Why? Fearing that he'll miss the command of Allah. And when he blows through the horn, the Himalayas, the K2, the Everest, they will come to an end. The hadith of Abu Huraira comes to mind that the earth will shake and the earth will shake in such a manner. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You will see it will be like a vessel in the middle of the ocean getting battered by tornadoes. The horn is so terrifying. Allahu Akbar. You will see. You will see a mother who's got a baby in her stomach. When she hears the horn, she will miscarry a baby. Why? Because the sound of the horn. The sound of the horn is so terrifying that a child who's only 10 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old, his face will turn wrinkly, his hair will turn white, he will look like a person who's over 100. Why? Because this is the day of reckoning.
And when this is taking place, the mother who's got a child, she on that day will remember that she had a child. Why? Because the sound of the horn. The sound of the horn is so terrifying that you will see mankind will be in a drunken state, but in reality, they won't be drunk. The hadith of Abu Huraira comes to mind. He said that shaitan and his army will begin to run and they will begin to hide. They will begin to run and they will begin to hide. The Quran says on that day, there is no refuge. He will look above the people and what will they see? They will see the sky will look like the black, black filth of oil. It will crack piece by piece. The earth beneath them, it will crack piece by piece. The oceans will be on fire on that day and they will explode from their places. Allahu Akbar, picture this in your mind that the oceans, they will be on fire and they will explode from their places. The stars will lose their shine and they will come crashing down and there'll be darkness everywhere. And when there is darkness everywhere, nothing will remain. Every single thing in the universe will come to an end. The hadith of Abu Huraira says that the angel of death, it will say to Allah, Oh Allah, all those are in the heaven and all those are in the dunya, they have come to an end except for those who you wish to remain alive. Oh Allah, Allah will say, who remains? And the angel will say, Oh Allah, Jibrail remains, Mikael remains, Israfil remains, and the angels who are carrying your throne, they remain. Allah the Almighty will say, Let death come to Jibrail, let death come to Mikael, let death come to Israfil, and let death come to all those angels who are carrying my throne. Then Allah will say, Who remains? Ya yeah, Allah knows who remains. Allah will say to the angel of death, who remains? And the angel will say, O oh Allah, I remain, you remain, no one else remains. Yet yeah, then Allah will say, I created you for a purpose. You have fulfilled your purpose. You also die and he will die. And then Allah the Almighty, he will roll up all the heavens in his hands. He will roll up all the worlds in his hands. And Allah will raise his voice and Allah will say, I am the Almighty Allah. I am the Almighty Allah. For whom is the divine rule today? For whom is the power today? For whom is the kingdom today? I am the king of all kings. Where are your dictators? Where are your oppressors? No one will answer. Allah himself will answer. And Allah will say, power is for Allah. Might is for Allah, the one, the only, the irresistible. And when this happens, the narration says, the earth will be made flat and will be like a stretch to rubber. Here Allah, the Almighty, He will order the heavens to pour rain. And the heavens will pour rain for 40 days. And the water, a certain liquid that is classed as water will reach 12 cubic. And then Allah the Almighty, He will say to the bodies form and they will form. And when they reach, reach their complete, Allah the Almighty will say, Jibrail, Mikael, Israfil, Malak al Mouth come to life and they will come to life. And then Allah the Almighty will say, Bring the souls, and the souls of the believers will come and they will be bright. Then the souls of the disbelievers will come and they will be bore on the plain. And they will be dark and murky. Then Allah will order 
the souls to be placed in the horn. And then Allah the Almighty will order the angel Israfil السلام, to blow through the horn. And this angel will blow and it will give it such a blow that the hadith states that the souls will come out like a swarm of bees and they will cover the heavens and the earth and they will enter their bodies. And everybody will be wake. They'll be naked. They'll be uncircumcised. They'll be barefooted and they'll be looking forward. The hadith states, picture this in your mind. The person who done wudu, who done wudu with perfection, Allahu Akbar on the plane of resurrection, there'll be light covering his hand, there'll be light covering his face, there'll be light covering his head, there'll be light covering his feet. There'll be light in front of him, there'll be light behind him, there'll be light on the left, there'll be light on the right, there'll be light in front, the light behind, light will be surrounding him. Allahu Akbar, then comes the Hujjaj. They'll be on the plane of resurrection. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They will be saying, La Baik, Allahumma La Baik, La Baik, Allahumma La Baik. There'll be light in front of them, there'll be light behind them, there'll be light on the left, there'll be light on the right, they'll be surrounded by light. Then comes the warriors of Islam. They'll become, they will be on the plane of resurrection. Some will be holding their own intestines. Some will be holding their own limbs. Their blood will be flowing. Their blood will smell like musk. There'll be light in front of them, light behind them, light on the left, light on the right. Light will be surrounding them. Then comes the Mu'addin. He will be on the plane of resurrection and he will be giving the Adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he will continue, continuously do the Adhan. There'll be light in front of him. There'll be light behind him. There'll be light on the left. There'll be light on the right. He'll be surrounded by light. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. These are for the good people. Now comes the junkie. Now comes the druggie. The very spliff he took. The very sniff he took. He'll be on the plane of resurrection. The crack, the weed, the opium, the white lady, you name it, will be wrapped around his neck. His tongue will come down towards his waist like a thirsty dog. Between his skin and his flesh, there'll be snakes and scorpions biting him. He'll be made to wear the slippers of hell that'll make his brain bubble like a boiling water in a kettle. The person who was fornicated, he'll be on that plane of resurrection. Allahu Akbar, his private power will be placed on his face. His blood and pus will flow from me. And the prophets of Allah, his mother, his father, every single person on the plane of resurrection will know that this guy is the fornicator. The one who backbites, his face will be on the plane of resurrection in such a manner. Allahu Akbar, his face will be transformed into a monkey. The person who deals with haram, he'll be on the plane of resurrection. His face will be transformed into a pig. Allahu Akbar, the person who deals with interest, he'll be walking on his face. The two-faced guy. The two-faced guy will be on the plane of resurrection. In such a manner that he'll have two physical faces. In another narration, he'll have two tongues made out of fire. Then the oppressor. Then the oppressor will be on the plane of resurrection. The oppressor, this oppressor will be in such darkness. Wallahi by Allah, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that so much darkness he will be surrounded with that if he was to place his hands in front of his face, he will not be able to see his own hands. In another narration, he will be made blind. And the one who gives difficulty to his neighbors, he'll be on the plane of resurrection, he will have no arms. Different people, according to their sins, will be raised on the plane of resurrection. They'll be naked. They'll be uncircumcised. They will be barefooted and they'll be looking forward. And when this is taking place, this is taking place. They will remain like this for 70 years. For 70 years, they will remain like this. 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The narration says that some will be sweating up to the ankles, some will be sweating up to the knees, some will be sweating up to the waist, some will be drowned in their own sweat. They will be screaming, they will be shouting. But on that day, their tears will run out and blood will flow from their eyes. Fortunate is that person who finds a place to stand on on the plane of resurrection. Why? Because mankind will be cramped together. And when this is taking place, for 70 years, they will remain like this. 70 years. The sun will be above the head. Could you imagine the plane of resurrection? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is the plane of resurrection. Picture this in your mind. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the whole of mankind is like this, when the whole of mankind is like this for 70 years, no hope, no nothing, they will head towards Adam and Islam. And they will say, Adam, intercede for us. Adam will say, the I do not know what will happen to me. Allah is angry like never before. Go towards Nuh alayhi salam. Then the whole of mankind, they will rush towards Nuh alayhi salam. Then again, the people on the plane of resurrection will say, intercede for us. Intercede for us. Nuh alayhi salam will say, Allah the Almighty is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Ibrahim. Ibrahim, the whole of mankind will run towards Ibrahim. Ibrahim will say, Allah the Almighty is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Musa. Musa will say the same thing. Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Isa alayhi salam. Then the whole of mankind will turn and they will rush towards Isa alayhi salam. And they will say, intercede for us. Isa alayhi salam will say exactly the same thing as the prophets before him. That Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you will realize the status of Muhammad. You will realize the true status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The whole of mankind, could you imagine the plane of resurrection? The whole of it, they will rush towards Muhammad and they will say, Oh Muhammad, intercede for us. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will go towards Allah and he will intercede and his intercession will be accepted. And then Allah will descend. And when the whole of mankind is on the plane of resurrection, in this manner, some will be sweating up to their knees, some up to their waist, some will be drowned in their sweat. Some people's faces will be transformed into monkeys, other pigs, other people will be walking on their faces. Other snakes will be around their necks and will be grabbing their cheeks and biting them. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people on the plane of resurrection will be in this state. The hadith of Abu Huraira comes to mind. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that there'll be a big explosion. A big explosion will take place. Such an explosion that they will look above them. What would they see? The first heaven, it will break into pieces. And the angels will descend in their numbers and they will encircle mankind and they will outnumber mankind and jinn kind put together. Then the second heaven will break and the angels of the second heaven will descend and they will outnumber the angels before them, mankind, jinn kind put together and they will encircle the whole of plane of resurrection. Then the third heaven will break. The angels of the third heaven will descend. 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They will descend, they will be stronger. They will be glorifying Allah. And they will encircle the whole of mankind. And they will outnumber the angels before them and mankind and jinn kind put together. The angel of the fourth, the angels of the fourth will descend. The angels of the fifth will descend. The angels of the sixth will descend. The angels of the seventh will descend. And what will happen? They will surround mankind. They will outnumber them. They will be stronger. They will be bigger. And the whole of the plane of resurrection will be lighted up. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that there's eight angels who will bring Allah's throne on that day. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the one angel that is carrying Allah's throne his feet is on the lowest earth and their shoulders are on the highest heaven and Allah's throne is upon their shoulders. The distance between the earlobe and the neck is a distance of 70 years. At this moment of time, there is four angels who are carrying Allah's throne. But on the day of reckoning, on the plane of resurrection, Allahu Akbar, there will be eight angels that will be carrying Allah's throne. Why? Because Allah will be angry like never before. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah will say to these angels, I created you for a purpose. You have fulfilled your purpose. Do you know why I created you? And the angels will reply, Oh Allah, you know best. And Allah will say, I created you that you carry my throne. You have fulfilled your purpose. Ask for any power today and I will give it to you. The first will ask, Oh Allah, give me the power of the earth and it will be given it. The second angel will ask, Oh Allah, give me the power of the winds and it will be given it. The third angel will ask, Oh Allah, give me the power of the heavens and it will be given him. And the fourth will ask, Oh Allah, give me the power of the rain, of the oceans, the waters, and it will be given it. Then Allah will say, lift my throne. And they will try to lift Allah's throne and the throne of Allah will not be able, they will not be able to lift Allah's throne. Allah will say, say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And when they say this, Allah's throne will lift. And there'll be eight angels like this who will be carrying Allah's throne on that day. And then Allah, the Almighty, will descend in a manner befitting Allah. And when Allah descends Allah will say bring the fire of hell to Jibra'il and the fire of hell will be born there will be 70,000 whips around the fire of hell on each whip there will be 70,000 angels they'll be dragging the hellfire. Why? Because the hellfire will be angry like never before. It's surrounded by four walls. One wall is so thick that it will take a person 40 years just to cover its distance. 40 years. The heat of the fire of hell is such that for a thousand years it was kindled and it turned into the color red. Then it was kindled for another thousand years. Then it changed from the color red or white. Then it was kindled for another thousand years. Then it changed from the color white, black. At this moment of time, the fire of hell is black and Allah will make the moon and the sun into pieces and he will throw it into the fire of hell. And when the fire of hell sees mankind, 
It will leap towards mankind. It will roar towards mankind. The prophets, the angels, the whole of mankind will fall on their knees. To such an extent that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he would say, oh, oh Allah, I am your friend. Show mercy on me. Yet again, the fire of hell will leap. And it will leap inside. It will make such a leap that the whole of mankind they will fall on their knees. Yet again, the fire of hell will leap again. It will leap towards mankind and the whole of the plain of resurrection, the prophets, the angels, they will fall flat on their faces and they'll be looking from the corner of the eye, fearing that the fire of hell might take them. And then Allah the Almighty will say to the fire of hell, speak. And the fire of hell will speak. And the fire of hell will say, I swear there is no God worthy of worship except you, Allah. I, the fire of hell, will take revenge from all those people who you provided for. And when it came to the time of worship, Allah, they disobeyed you. I, the fire of hell, will take revenge today. The narration says that a neck will come out from the fire of hell. It will have two eyes, it will have a mouth. And the fire of hell will say, I've been assigned to take three people. The first, the arrogant people. And the fire of hell will pick them out from their lines, just as a bird picks up sesame seed. Yet again, the fire of hell will say, I've been assigned to take out all those people who give trouble to Allah and his messenger and he will pick them out from their lines just as a bird picks up sesame seed. The third, the fire of hell will say, I've been assigned to take out all those people who take, who make pictures for worship. And we pick them out from their lines just as a bird picks up sesame seed. Now the judgment stops. Allah will say, Bring the animals. Why? Because the first thing to get judged on the plane of resurrection will be the animals. And Allah will say, Bring the animals. And when the animals are born, all of the animals, when they see Allah, they will fall flat in sujood. And Allah will say, This is not the time of prostration. This is the day of judgment. And to such an extent, that if an ant And to such an extent that if an ant oppressed another ant, oppressed it, whether he was in the middle of some jungle, under some rock, Allah will make him pay the price of sin on that day. And when this is taking place on the plane of resurrection, Allahu Akbar, what would you see? The people will be getting punished. The people will be getting punished. Some will be drowning up to their ankles, some up to the knees, some up to the waist, some will be drowned in their own sweat. Some people, the intoxicants will be around their necks, some their tongues will come down towards their waist. Some people will be on the plane of the private parts will be on their faces and blood and pus will flow from it. Some will be, there'll be snakes around their necks. Some will have two tongues, some will have two physical faces. Some people's bodies will be divided, cut in half. Some people may be made small as ants and people will walk all over them. They'll be cramped, they'll be crying, their tears will run out, blood will be flowing. And then after Allah has dealt with the animals, Allah will deal with the messengers. Starting from the messengers from mankind. Allah will say, 
bring the preserved tablet and the preserved tablet will be bought and when the preserved tablet is bought Allah will say where is the Zabur where is the Torah where is the Injil and where is the Quran and the preserved tablet will reply and he will say Jibra'il has copied it from me Allah will call Jibra'il and then Jibra'il will be born on the plane of resurrection Allah will say the preserved tablet has informed me has informed me that you have copied it does it speak the truth Jibra'il will be shaking and he will say oh Allah he speaks the truth. then Allah will say tell me what did you do with these books and Jibra'il will reply and he will say, Oh Allah, I gave the Zabur to Dawood alayhi salam. I gave the Torah to Musa alayhi salam. I gave the Injil to Isa alayhi salam. And I gave the Quran to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then Allah will say, Bring Nuh. And Nuh will be born on the plane of resurrection. He'll be shaking. If this is the state of the prophets, they will be shaking, shivering, scared. What chance do you and I have? Then Allah will say to Nuh, Jibra'il has informed me that you are from amongst the messengers. Does he speak the truth? Nuh alayhi islam will say, oh Allah, he speaks the truth. Allah will say, what did you do? And the messenger will reply and he will say, oh Allah, day and night, I called them towards Allah. I called them towards Tawheed. Oh Allah, they ran away. Allah will say, bring the people of Nuh. And then the people of Nuh alayhi islam will and Allah will say to them, The Nuh alayhi salam is claimed that he delivered the message to you. Does he speak the truth? And the whole of mankind, they'll be witnessing this. The people of Nuh will say, Oh Allah, he speaks a lie. He speaks a lie. My brothers, if this is the state of mankind on that day what is the likes of you and I? then after Allah has dealt with the messengers judgment will take place and the people will get judged one by one there'll be two groups on that day the people of the right they will receive the record in their right hand and then they will be the people of the left. Those who will receive the record in the left hand. The people of the right is those people who lived a life of obedience, who lived a life worshipping Allah, who lived a life fulfilling the commands of Allah and acting upon the Sunnah. People of the left, they will be the people of the fire of hell. And who are these people? These people are those people who lived a life of disobedience, who lived a life of sin. Then Allah will judge them. And who Allah decrees, has decreed for that person to go into the fire of hell. Allah the Almighty will say, fetter him, chain his hands, chain his feet. Abdullah ibn Abbas says, the chains will go through his back private part and it will come out from the front and they will wrap him and they will drag him and they will take him towards the fire of hell. Now, the angel that will take hold of him, black of face, black eyes, 
sharp black teeth. Allah has taken the mercy out of him. Why? So he doesn't feel pity for that person who will be dealing with in the fire of hell. And this angel will say, Didn't messengers come to you? Didn't you believe? You had no time for Allah? And he will throw him into the fire of hell with a severe thrust. On that day, there will be a bridge sharper than a knife, thin as hair, slippery. There'll be angels on both sides with hooks made out of fire. Some people will pass this bridge like the flash of light. Some will pass like a twinkle of an eye. Some will pass in such a manner that they'll be slipping and they'll pass. Others, they will slip and fall into the fire of hell. And the ones who have passed this stage of crossing the bridge, they will see Jannah. And when they see Jannah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now it's time for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will open the gates of Jannah for people who will enter Jannah. And people will enter in their thousands, in their millions. And the others, they will be in the fire of hell. I pray to the Almighty Allah that Allah makes us from those people who will receive the record in our right hand. As I pray to the Almighty Allah, the Allah forgives me. Why? Justice has not been done to this title.